back, you scoundrels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. G'day, mate. Welcome to Australia. Volcanoes can be absolutely massive, but the biggest volcano we found isn't even on Earth. It's Olympus Mons on Mars, and it stands an incredible 16 miles high, more than three times the height of Earth's tallest mountain, Mount Everest. Back here on our home planet Earth, you can find about one and a half thousand active volcanoes, each capable of throwing out floods and fountains of scalding hot lava and smoke. An erupting volcano is such an awesome sight that when early civilizations saw them, they thought they were the homes of angry gods. <laughs> Nowadays, we know that the impressive eruptions of these fiery mountains aren't the result of a godly temper tantrum, but rather the release of huge amounts of heat and pressure from deep beneath the Earth's surface. If you were to slice the Earth in two, you'd see that it's a bit like an onion with several different layers on top of each other. But as it's nearly 8,000 miles thick, it might take a while. On the top here, you have the crust. That's the hard rock we walk around on. And the oceans, they sit on top of that too. And beneath the crust is a thick layer of solid rock called the mantle that's so hot, it's a bit like really thick treacle. It flows like a liquid, but very, very slowly. And then further in, it gets even hotter. And the next layer, the outer core, is made up of liquid iron. When you finally get to the center, there's an inner core of hot, solid iron. Yeah. Oh. Oh, tiring work. Oh, hello, Fenton. What are you doing? Oh, oh, oh. but I'm supposed to be digging the hole. <laughs> Scientists have worked out that the temperature in the centre of the Earth is really high, about 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit, and the sizzling core acts like a hot plate underneath a pan of boiling water. The lower part of the mantle that's in contact with the core heats up, and because it can flow like a really thick liquid, it slowly rises towards the top. When it gets there, it's got nowhere left to go, so spreads out sideways. Now it's away from that hot core, it cools down a bit, which makes it sink back towards the centre of the Earth. This movement in the mantle is called a convection current, and it has an interesting effect on the crust layer above it. The Earth's crust isn't one solid piece. It's broken up, like a jigsaw, into pieces called tectonic plates. When the flow of hot mantle rock spreads out, it pushes those plates around and they bump and crash into each other and things get really exciting. When the plates grind together, that produces tons of heat, which can melt the solid rock into something called magma. More and more grinding makes more and more magma, and it builds up in pockets deep under the ground called magma chambers. The walls around the magma chambers are solid rock. They can't exactly stretch to make more space for the increasing amounts of magma inside, so the pressure keeps building, and eventually, well, let me show you. 
I'm going to demonstrate all this with my model volcano. This bit in here is the magma chamber. Now, rather than heat and rocks in the Earth's crust, I'm going to put in some vinegar with a bit of red food coloring and baking soda. And this is all going to produce a lot of gas and foam, which will be our model magma. A little bit safer than using actual molten rock, but just like in a real magma chamber, the pressure is going to build and build and it's got to find a way to escape. So let's try it. Right, first things first, I'm going to put in our vinegar. Here it goes into the magma chamber. And next goes in the baking soda. And let's wait to see what happens. I can hear it fizzing inside the magma chamber. And now we wait. Oh! <laughs> We've got an eruption! Oh, look at that! So already that high pressure magma eventually finds the easiest way out through cracks in the rock. And when it's out, it changes its name. When it's inside the molten rock, it's called magma. When it's outside, it's called lava. The lava flows out, this is awesome, like it's doing right now, and it cools in the air. It forms a huge pile of solid rock that we call a volcano. But different types of lava can make different types of eruptions. Some are smoky, some are gassy. <laughs> What's that gas in the air that seems to be knocking everyone out? Is that the volcano? <coughs> no, that's just Terry. He's eating all the sausages. Hello? <coughs> oh, 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 sorry. <coughs> Runny lava will find its way through cracks easily, so not much pressure builds up before it pours out all over the surface like a flood, creating a wide volcano with shallow slopes like on Hawaii. But a stickier lava can't flow as easily and it builds up lots of pressure before it escapes. That will make an explosive eruption with huge ash clouds producing steep-sided volcanoes like Mount Fuji in Japan. If there's too much pressure in the magma chamber, the volcano can even destroy itself when it explodes, like Mount St. Helens in the USA. In whatever way they happen, volcanic eruptions are an impressive sight, but some of the biggest have had a long-lasting effect on the environment and human history. The surprise eruption of Mount Vesuvius in Italy, nearly 2,000 years ago, buried the entire town of Pompeii in ash, preserving the Roman culture perfectly for archaeologists to discover much later. And right now, the pressure is building in a gigantic magma chamber underneath Yellowstone National Park in America. We don't know when it will erupt, but when it does, we reckon it'll be a big one. So much so, it will get the title of being a super volcano. It just doesn't seem to be cooking on this fire. How? Hmm. Hmm. So volcanic eruptions happen because the Earth's core is hot, which creates convection currents in the mantle, moving around the tectonic plates, causing them to melt when they bump into each other. That hot rock builds up in magma chambers until the pressure is too much and the magma escapes, becoming lava that cools to make a volcano. Thanks for watching, and for more awesome Explained with Lego videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button and comment below with what questions you want us to answer next. Now, how am I going to clean all this up? <laughs>